Hey, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolors. Thank you for joining me in another painting demo. This painting I was done for my Patreon group last week. It was a nice little painting and I want to share the process with you. So I haven't done horse painting for quite a while. Now, living in Pacific Northwest, I do see quite a few horses, especially now that the weather become warmer and drier, people starting to ride their horses again. I always love horses, I think they are beautiful animals, and to paint horses in watercolor, you can't really do it without thinking about Master Joseph Spukvich. So right off the bat, I will say that my painting style when it comes to horses is heavily influenced by him. The photo was provided by one of the premium VIP students in my patron group. And one of the things that I do in my patron group is that a student get to provide me the photo they are interested in painting. And I will paint that photo so that I can show them the process of turning a photograph reference into an actual watercolor painting. I will able to show them every step of the way. I like this photo a lot because the sense of atmosphere and the sense of motion from the horse. But other than that, it has a very distinct and strong shape. The two horses and the slide and the rider, they all connected together into a single shape. While the white patch on the horse's forehead really helps you to identify where the heads are. And that kind of connection is perfect for watercolor painting. So when I look at this photo reference, I immediately know that I want to lose the background. Even though the background trees looks nice, it is a huge distraction from the actual subject, which is the horses and the slide. When it comes to painting animal, horses, or even human being, I think the first very important thing is to capture their gestures, especially when they're in motion. And it's a little bit hard to break everything down right now, but you need to capture the rhythm and the balance of your subjects. Especially in this painting, the horses are running, you don't want them to look statics because they are not sculptured, they're actually living horses. So to convey the sense of motion, start with capturing this gesture of the horse so the viewers can see where the balance is shifted, where the horse is putting their force on. And that to me is the most important thing about this painting, actually more so than trying to draw an anatomically correct horse. So I start with my first swatch. My first swatch is just to get a very loose color in the background. Now, I do want to lose most of the background, but I still want to just have a little bit of blurry visual noise in the background so it doesn't look plain. But I'm going to focus mostly on the horses and the slide. So I try to be loose in my first swatch so I have better chance to stay loose while I'm painting. It's kind of like stretching and warming up before you start your exercise. And that is especially important right after you finish your line drawing because usually the drawing can get pretty tight. So you need to find a way to loosen up yourself before continue your painting. So after just painting some random colors and stuff in the back to create some texture, I start to painting the horse. Now the first wash on the horse is actually not all that fur color, it's just a very neutral gray because I'm trying to paint the tone of the forehead, which are the white patches. Now they are pretty light, but they are not pure white for me, so it's fine to just paint over them, give them a little bit of tone. Plus this is an easier way for you to get into the painting, start to paint a big shape. So. As I paint the shape, I change the color a little bit, I shift to a little bit of red when I'm painting the sleigh. And now I'm connecting that shape, soften it with a little bit of water, especially in the bottom where the legs are. And now I'm doing some wet onto wet, adding some warm and cool colors, just trying to make this wash look a little bit more interesting and rich. So the first wash, other than painting the color of the light, is really just to get yourself into the painting and try to smooth out that fear of the white paper. Now onto the second wash, I started to paint the horse. I start to paint a darker value. 
and started to paint the dark brown fur on the horse. I leave out the white patch on the forehead and I try to be bold with my brushstroke and yet a little bit careful. What I mean is that I don't want to use tiny little brushstroke trying to build up the form and trying to make it very, very accurate. I want each brushstroke to follow a certain form and try to enhance the overall structure and the gesture of the horse. But I also don't want to make it very messy. So each single brushstroke before you start painting it, think twice before you put down that very brushstroke. It's almost as if you are sculpting a sculpture, but you are doing it on a 2D surface with a paintbrush. And brushstrokes are also a very important thing you can use to capture the gesture. So I usually try to follow my brushstroke with the motion. Like the leg right here, I try to follow the gesture of the leg, where the legs are kicking, where the forms are going. And even though at the end it's just going to be a single shape, I think it's still very important that you are mindful of your brushstrokes. Because aside from making it look good, it's also the experience. When you paint like that, you can feel the motion, the gesture and the force of your subject, in this case the horse. So after painting part of the horse on the right, I connect that to the horse on the left. So both horses connecting to each other. What separates them are the head. And honestly, you really don't need to try too hard to separate each element because they are one single entity. If you think about it, they are all connected physically as well. They're all connected by the sleigh and the rider is sitting in the sleigh as well. So they are all physically touching each other. So connecting the shape with watercolor is very, very important to have that sense of unity and to have that sense of simplicity. And as you can see, I didn't finish the legs on the horse because they are running. There's no need to make them very, very defined and steel. So now if you look at it in the distance, it just looks like a shape. They're all connected, but you can starting to tell that they are two horses because of the head, because of the shape and the silhouette. And also one very important element, the ears on the horse. I will never forget what Joseph Spookfish said in one of his DVD. He said that the most important element on a horse are the ears. Now that might be an exaggeration. If you get the ear right and everything else wrong, it might still look really odd. But the point is to really study and capture the distinct characters on the horse. Now I do leave out a little bit of highlight to hint places like harness and hardware on the sleigh. But other than that, everything is connected. I just try to switch the color in between so that it doesn't look as a flat color and a dead color. And now I'm coming back and start to paint the darker value. And I start off with the eye and some of the shadow area on the horse. And as soon as I paint some of the dark, I can start to define the face of the horse a lot better. So you can start to define the silhouette of the head. And because I paint that right after the second wash, some part of the second wash is not completely dry yet. So you do see a little bit of the soft edge, especially the bottom, because I re-wet the bottom, trying to soften those legs up a little bit. So they are a little bit less blurry. The horses are running on the snow, so they will be snow plowing. So by making the legs a little bit less defined and even just a little bit soft, it can feel the sense of motion and atmosphere a lot better. And I continue to paint the dark. And I also try to connect the dark shape as well. They are not all separated. I just look for the darker area and starting to paint the shape there and trying to connect to each other. And this is also the good chance for you to reinforce some of the key areas in the painting. So in this case, the front leg the horse, the muscle, structure, and so on. And as you can see, just a couple simple values and shapes. 
if you paint them in the right place, it can have great effect. And it's not because I paint a lot of details, it's because I give you some suggestions for your mind to complete the painting. And to me, that is more engaging to look at, that is more interesting. Because I believe a good painting is interactive, even though you cannot physically paint with me, but if I can leave just enough clue for you to complete a picture, I think at the end you will find it more rewarding to look at and it will be more interesting and more interactive and engaging. And I believe that is why so many people are drawn to loose painting. So many students want to learn how to paint loose because it's fun to look at and it's fun to do. Adding some darks to the sleigh and also the dark on the writer's face. So I want to paint just enough detail and suggestion to convey some forms and structures. And now this painting is almost finished. Just adding a little bit more details, trying to wrap things up. When you are starting to like your painting, it's a good sign to wrap it up. One of the biggest mistake for students and sometimes for me as well is to see that something works really well and you want to paint 30 more and that usually result a very overworked painting here is the finished painting i hope you enjoy this painting process if you're interested to see the full unedited version of this demo you can consider joining my patreon group i'll put the link down below that being said i hope you are well and i wish you a wonderful day wherever you are this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. See you next time.